When it comes to talents in the IndyCar series with high potential, the name Linus Lundqvist comes to mind. He took part in three rounds of last season's IndyCar series after Simon Pagano tried to live out his dreams of being a carousel. And he showed glimmers of excellence that clearly caught the eye of Chip Ganassi, where he finds himself for his debut IndyCar season this year. However, it's something that I want to bring to light in this video today. Therefore, sit down, relax, or stand up and panic, it, it doesn't matter, because today we're going to be discussing Linus Lundqvist's exciting potential. Before we get into this, I'm going to be that annoying YouTuber and point out that the majority of my new viewers aren't subscribed. I'm gunning for 20k and would greatly appreciate everyone pressing that button. Anyway, no more time wasting, back to Lundqvist. Linus Hans Frederick Lundqvist was born in Tyreso, Sweden. I probably pronounced that wrong. On the 26th of March, 1999, making him the only rookie I've spoken about who's substantially older than me. Lundqvist began karting at the age of six during a holiday in Finland and from from there, contested numerous championships in Sweden and across Europe, winning numerous titles. The only thing I've ever achieved on a holiday is confusing a Spanish man while trying to buy a football, so I suppose he was a step ahead of me from the offset. In 2015, Lundqvist made his single-seater debut in the Formula Renault 1.6 Nordic Championship with Team Tito. Again, I probably pronounced that wrong. He claimed fourth in the Nordic Championship, second in the JSM standings, and third in the NEZ Championship, which was pretty handy for a kid who'd only just sat in a single-seater race car for the first time. In 2016, Lundqvist returned to the championship with the LL Motorsport Junior team, where he absolutely dominated proceedings to claim 10 wins and win the championship by an outstanding margin. Last time I saw something this dominant was watching 50 Shades of Grey. Just kidding, I, I watch F1. In 2017, Lundqvist transitioned to the British F4 championship with Double R Racing. He performed pretty well, claiming five wins in his rookie season, but only finishing P5 in the championship due to inconsistency, which is to be expected from a rookie in such a series. In that case, I should probably let Stingray Rob off the hook a little bit more. He finished behind Logan Sargent, Oscar Piastri, and championship winner Jamie Caroline. Whilst in F4, he also tried his luck in the British F3 Championship, attending three rounds and picking up three points finishes, the highest of which being a P7. This was just a taster of things to come, however, since he would be attending the entire British F3 season in 2018, sticking with Double R Racing. The season couldn't really have gone better for the young Swede picking up seven wins over the course of the season and winning the championship by 85 points, which is outstanding for a first season in the spec series. Something even more impressive is the fact that he managed to avoid Maldonado's cousin. After his success in British F3, he had the option to take part in the GP3 series or the Euro Formula Open Championship in 2019. He had a post-season test at Yas Marina with the Campos GP3 team. He very quickly found out that a Campos-built race car has the power to weight ratio of a 1994 Ford Transit. Therefore, it would come as no surprise that he ran back to Double R Racing for the 2019 Euro Formula Championship. He came fifth in total with two podiums and a fastest lap. His fortune would swing, however, when he won the Euro Formula Open Winter Series with Campos. It turns out Lundqvist is pretty good at driving Ford Transits. There were only two races in question here though, so the validity of this championship is on par with the Alex Palou lawsuits. In 2020, Lundqvist must have confused himself with a certain Dutch F1 driver, winning 16 of 18 races in the Formula Regional Americas Championship, ahead of David Malukas in second, who, needless to say, got very sick of the sight of Lundqvist's rear end. And no, they weren't filming content for OnlyFans, that's such a stupid joke. The only omissions from P1 were races at Sebring and Homestead, where he picked up a P6 and a P2 respectively. Other current IndyCar drivers within the field were Benjamin Peterson and Kiffin Simpson, who finished P12 and P13 in the standings. Not the fairest comparison because they didn't attend the whole season, but Lundqvist's dominance isn't to go unnoticed. As part of winning the Formula Regional Americas title, Lundqvist received a Honda-backed scholarship for the 2021 Indy Lights Championship. In January of 2021, Lundqvist announced he would join the grid with GRG with HMD Motorsports, scoring three wins and 11 podiums in 20 races 
finishing third in the point standings in his rookie season, behind Carl Kirkwood and David Malukas, who decided that he'd seen enough of Lundqvist's diffuser. This was extremely impressive regardless, and reflected how he'd approached new championships throughout his career, hitting the ground running more or less immediately wherever he went. He finished ahead of Devlin Di Francesco, but he got an IndyCar drive because, well, how else would we get cautions? The Swede entered the 2022 Indy Light season with the sole goal of proving a point to IndyCar teams, driving for HMD with Dale Coin Racing. He scored five wins and nine podiums in 14 races, which, needless to say, is a pretty decent ratio. To claim the title with a 92-point margin, he finished ahead of Benjamin Peterson and Stingray Rob. However, he lost two potential IndyCar seats to these guys because... I mean, one's got money and the other's got a cool name and money. Admittedly annoyed by missing out on his dream of reaching IndyCar, he returned back to Scandinavia to race in their Porsche Carrera Cup in 2023 because, I mean, why the f*** not? Only taking part in four races, he demonstrated that he still had pace picking up two P3s, a P4, and a P6. He'd also made an appearance in the IMSA Sports Car Championship, but that was about as forgettable as John Alacy's 2012 Indy 500 attempt. There were no plans for Lundqvist to appear in IndyCar in 2023, until Simon Pagano decided he wanted to be the first IndyCar driver to complete a somersault, rendering Meyer Shank driverless for the time being. Tom Blomquist would fill that vacant seat for the 10th round in Toronto, picking up a measly P25 in his IndyCar day. Debut. This was due to IndyCar being, I mean, well, IndyCar. The seat would be filled with ex-Ed Carpenter racing driver Connor Daly for the next two rounds, who, similar to his spell in ECR, failed to impress, picking up a P17 and a P21 at the Iowa doubleheader. This opened the door to Linus Lundqvist for the next three rounds, and he took that opportunity. He made his IndyCar debut with Meyer Shank during the 2023 Big Machine Music City Grand Prix, otherwise known as Nashville, uh, otherwise known as Hell. Lundqvist qualified in an impressive P11 and continued to perform well in the race. He regularly ran inside the top 15, however he made a mistake heading into turn 11 and crashed out with only 12 laps remaining. He did set the fastest lap however, so there's something I guess. He finished 12th at the next round around the Indianapolis infield circuit, maintaining his pace from before but without the unfortunate exit this time. His third and last race in 2023 would be at Gateway, which was his first IndyCar oval race. Lundqvist finished 18th and set another fastest lap, making it 2 in 3 for the Swede. Maya Shank Racing would move back to Tom Blomquist for the remainder of the season, however, making it clear that there was a deal between the two for 2024. This wasn't a sight for sore eyes for Lundqvist, however, who was approached by Chip Ganassi for a full-time drive in 2024, driving the number 8 car left vacant by Marcus Ericsson's move to Andretti. Linus Lundqvist's 2024 season is full of promise. With the pace that he has showed over the course of his career, I am expecting the Swede to hit the ground running relatively quickly, and put in some good performances, in order to cement himself as an important driver within the IndyCar field. He's attending every race this year, giving him the chance to experience road courses, street courses and ovals. With his positive history, I wouldn't expect him to struggle in any of these disciplines. But what do you guys think? Are you excited to see Lundqvist drive for Chip Ganassi this season? Let me know in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this deep dive into Lundqvist's career, let me know if there are any more drivers I should document and I'll be sure to give it a go. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to not miss any more future uploads. And I will see you all in the next video. But until then, take care and thank you very much for watching.